All right, welcome to the deep dive. Today we are uh, getting into something really exciting, a medical breakthrough that could genuinely reshape global health. Think about this, a single shot, just one, offering, you know, really robust, long lasting protection against HIV. We're talking about a potentially game-changing development coming out of MIT, a new single-dose vaccine. That's right. And our mission today uh, in this deep dive is really to unpack the science here, to look at the innovation, understand what it could mean, its potential impact, and maybe more broadly explore what this signals for fighting other, well, really tough diseases. And we're basing this on a recent report from New Atlas, which goes into the details of this MIT research. Yeah, it's a great source. But um, before we jump into the vaccine itself, I think it's important to ground ourselves in the current reality of HIV. Just for context, the numbers, frankly, are quite sobering. HIV has claimed over 42 million lives globally. It's staggering. And right now, well, as of the end of 2023, nearly 42 million people were estimated to be living with HIV. 42 million. Yeah. And the impact isn't evenly spread. About 65% of those living with HIV are in Africa. That's a huge concentration. Plus, it's an ongoing crisis. In 2023 alone, there were an estimated 1.3 million new infections worldwide. It's just, these aren't abstract figures, are they? Not at all. They represent people, families, communities, yeah. year after year. And it really underscores why strong prevention is so critical. Why something like an effective single-dose vaccine could be such a huge deal. Exactly, the need is immense. So let's get into that breakthrough. MIT researchers working with Scripps Research Institute, they found a way to uh, supercharge vaccines. That's the term used. The goal being strong protection from just one dose. That sounds pretty revolutionary. It really is a potential step change. So to understand the supercharge part, let's quickly recap basic vaccine components. You've got your immunogens, right? The target part that the immune system learns to recognize, like the wanted poster for the virus. And then you have adjuvants. These are crucial. They're like the amplifier boosting the immune system's response to that immunogen. They signal pay attention. Right, the booster signal. Precisely. And MIT's innovation really focuses on these adjuvants. They didn't just use one, they combined two powerful ones. And this combination seems to elicit a much, much better immune response than just using one on its own. Interesting. So it's about the synergy between two boosters, not just finding one super booster. How does that actually work? What are these two adjuvants they're using? Okay, so the first one is pretty common. Aluminum hydroxide, or alum, you find it in many vaccines already. Right, familiar. The second one is more specialized. It's a nanoparticle called SMNP, developed by Professor Daryl Irvine at MIT. And uh, this SMNP nanoparticle is itself a combination. It holds two things. Yeah. Saponin, which comes from the Chilean soapbark tree. Okay, natural source. And a synthetic adjuvant called monophosphoryl lipid A, or MPLA for short. So it's alum. Plus this nanoparticle package containing two other active ingredients. Exactly. You've got alum, which provides a, a sort of slow release effect, keeping the immune system engaged. Then the SMMP delivers saponin, which wakes up various immune cells, and MPLA, which hits a specific, very important alarm pathway, the toll-like receptor 4 pathway. Yeah. So it's like um, multiple signals firing at once, telling the immune system, this is important, react strongly, react effectively, it orchestrates a better response. That makes sense. It's like a coordinated push rather than just one signal. Yeah. And what did they actually see in the studies? What were the results of this dual approach? The results, certainly in the mouse models reported, were quite striking. They found this dual adjuvant formulation boosted the B-cell response by two to three times compared to using just a single adjuvant. Two to three times. And B-cells are the ones making antibodies, right? Correct. B cells produce the antibodies that specifically recognize and neutralize the pathogen, like HIV in this case. So a stronger B cell response generally means better protection. Okay, so more antibodies produced initially. But what about long term? You mentioned single dose protection. Right, and this is maybe the most interesting part. The way this vaccine worked, it caused the components to gather in the lymph nodes of the mice. The lymph nodes. The immune system's training centers. Exactly. And crucially, the vaccine didn't just pass through quickly. It accumulated and stayed there for about a month. A whole month. Yeah. This sustained presence, this long exposure within the lymph nodes, gave the immune system extended time to really build up a strong and diverse antibody arsenal against the HIV protein. That sustained presence seems key then. That's how you might get durable protection from one shot. That's the thinking. It allows for a more mature and robust immune memory to develop. Were there any hints in the research about how long 
long term might actually mean in humans or potential downsides to stimulating the immune system like that for so long? That's the million dollar question, really. The current report focuses on this month long accumulation in mice as the mechanism. Human trials will be needed to see the actual duration of protection. As for downsides, the advantage here is using components alum, saponin, and PLA that are relatively well understood and have been used in other contexts. Oh, okay. So it's not a totally novel, unknown substance. They're combining known tools in a new way, which could, you know, potentially streamline the safety evaluation process. That's a really important point. It makes it sound more practical, maybe faster to develop. Mm -hmm. There's a quote from J. Christopher Love, a chemical engineering professor involved, that really nails this. He said, um, What's potentially powerful is that you can achieve long-term exposures based on a combination of adjuvants that are already reasonably well understood. Right. So it doesn't require a different technology. It's just combining features mm -hmm. to enable low-dose or potentially even single-dose treatments. Exactly. It's about clever formulation using existing building blocks. And thinking about the real world, the implications of a single dose are just massive, aren't they? Especially for global distribution. Multi-dose vaccines are logistically challenging, particularly in low-income countries. You need people to come back, complex storage. Oh, absolutely. The follow-up, the cold chain, ensuring compliance, it's a huge hurdle. Single shot bypasses so much of that. It could dramatically improve accessibility, reach more people, especially in those areas most affected by HIV. It potentially changes the entire delivery model, mm -hmm. makes widespread prevention campaigns much more feasible. And it's not just about HIV either. The researchers themselves believe this dual adjuvant strategy could work for other tricky viruses too. Like what? Well, they mention things like influenza, which is constantly changing, and even SARS-CoV-2, the virus behind COVID-19. Wow. Yeah, if this approach works well for protein-based vaccines against a complex target like HIV, it could be a really valuable platform technology for other infectious diseases. That's huge potential. Okay, so we have this very promising MIT vaccine, but it's good to see it in context. There was another recent development, right? Linacapavir, approved by the FDA. Yes, linacapavir. It's an injectable given twice a year for HIV prevention. Described as a near-perfect shield in some reports. Definitely another big step forward. So another powerful tool. But there's a catch. Well, yes, and the new Atlas report highlights this quite effectively. Linacapavir is scientifically promising, no doubt. But rolling it out globally faces significant challenges. Specifically, the report mentions that major global health programs, the ones needed to buy and distribute such drugs widely in low-income countries. They face funding cuts. Exactly. They've been slashed or undermined. So you have the scientific advance, but the infrastructure and funding needed to ensure equitable access just might not be there, or at least not sufficiently. That's a sobering reality check. The best science doesn't help if it can't reach people. And this, I guess, circles back to the MIT vaccine's potential advantage again. It does. A single-dose vaccine, inherently simpler logistically, might be better positioned to navigate some of those distribution and funding hurdles. It's potentially more resilient to those systemic challenges. It could be. Its very nature might make it more practical for widespread implementation, even in resource-constrained settings. So, wrapping this up, the MIT single-dose approach for an HIV vaccine seems incredibly promising. It's a really clever use of existing knowledge, combining adjuvants in a new way to get a powerful, potentially long-lasting effect from one shot. It really is elegant science, leveraging well-understood components to achieve something potentially transformative. It opens the door not just for HIV prevention, but maybe a whole new way to approach vaccine design for other difficult viruses. Definitely. It's a very exciting development in vaccinology. And maybe this leaves us with a final thought for you, the listener, to ponder. We have this scientific breakthrough, a single dose vaccine using optimized known components. But we also have the harsh reality of global health funding gaps and distribution challenges, as highlighted even with other recent advances like Lena Kapavir. Right. So the question becomes, what are the absolutely critical next steps? How do we bridge that gap between this brilliant lab science and actual widespread public health impact on the ground? And maybe how does an innovation like this force us to rethink the whole system, the logistics, the funding, the global cooperation needed to make sure breakthroughs actually reach everyone who needs them? Mm -hmm.